Hi everyone! This video is about cell walls, a feature found on many but not all cells. We'll start by finding out which types of cells have cell walls and which types of cells do not have cell walls. So here we have four diagrams, a plant cell, an animal cell, a fungal cell, and a prokaryotic cell. And in each of these diagrams, the major components of the cell have been labeled for you. So if you take a look at these diagrams, you can see which cells have a cell wall. If we start with the plant cell here, you can see that it does have a cell wall. The animal cell, nope, it does not. The fungal cell does have a cell wall, and the prokaryotic cell also has a cell wall. So cell walls are found on plant, fungal, and prokaryotic cells, but not animal cells. If you look at where the cell wall is found in each of these diagrams, you'll see that it's always just outside or just external to the plasma membrane. So we do find the cell wall in the same general position in each of these types of cells, but the exact structure and function of the cell wall is going to be a little bit different depending on what type of cell we find it in, or on rather. We're going to take a quick look at the structure and function of the cell wall in each of these types of cells. We're going to start with plants. Here's a diagram of a plant cell, and you can see that the cell wall is found on the very outside. So this darker green layer is shown here as being the cell wall, just exterior to that plasma membrane, and then inside are all these organelles that you've already learned. This diagram is a little bit misleading because it shows the cell wall as being dark green, and that's not true at all. This image here is some plant cells viewed under a microscope, and you can see that those chloroplasts are green, and that's true, as you learned already in a previous video, but the cell wall doesn't actually have any color of its own. So the cell wall isn't actually green. It can reflect the color of the chloroplasts and sometimes appear green, but it doesn't actually have any color of its own. In terms of what it's made of, the primary ingredient of the plant cell wall is a molecule with which you're already familiar. It's cellulose. So it's a polysaccharide you already know about from our unit on biological molecules. And if we could take a really close look at a plant cell wall, you'd see that it's like a woven mat of fibers, and each of those fibers is a bundle of cellulose molecules. So just like you can take yarn and knit it into a sweater or a blanket, these cellulose molecules are bundled into larger fibers, which are then used to make a larger mesh. And that mesh is fairly strong and rigid, so the function of this cellulose cell wall is structural support. It gives shape and structure to the cell. And as you learned in the vacuole video recently, the central vacuole of a plant cell fills with as much water as it can take, and then that water pushes out against the rigid cellulose cell wall, and that's what provides the structural support for plant cells. Next, let's take a look at fungal cells. Here's a simplified diagram of a fungal cell, and you can see the cell wall here as the very outside layer shown in this orangey yellow color, again, just exterior to that cell membrane or plasma membrane. This fungal cell wall is made of something different, but once again, it's a molecule you already know. The main ingredient of the fungal cell wall is that polysaccharide chitin that you learned about in our biological molecules unit. So if we could take a really close look at a cross-section of the outside of a fungal cell, you'd see that plasma membrane, that phospholipid bilayer that we learned about, and then a bunch of other things outside it, including some proteins and some other carbohydrates, and one of the main ingredients here are those chitin fibers. And like cellulose, chitin is fairly strong and rigid, so the function of the fungal cell wall is also structural support. Finally, we'll take a look at prokaryotic cell walls, and we'll focus on organisms in the domain bacteria. Here's a diagram of a bacterial cell, and you can see the cell wall shown here in purple, just exterior to that plasma membrane, which is this orangey color. And once again, these colors are not real. If you could look at it up close, this would not be a purple structure. But if you could take a really close look at a cross-section of the outside of a bacterial cell, in this diagram it's showing the plasma membrane as this very thin red layer, and then outside of that is the cell wall shown in this brownish color. And the main ingredient of the bacterial cell wall is this molecule here, it's peptidoglycan. And this is a molecule we have not seen before, and you don't really need to know much about it. It's a complicated molecule made of a combination of sugars and amino acids. So it's not really a protein, it's not really a carbohydrate, it's somewhere in between. But here's a fun fact about peptidoglycan. 
Some types of antibiotics, which are drugs used to kill bacteria that cause infections, such as strep throat and bronchitis, some of those antibiotic drugs work by blocking or inhibiting peptidoglycan production in bacterial cells. And when bacterial cells can't make peptidoglycan, they can't make cell walls and they can't reproduce, so they can't make you sick. So that's just kind of a fun side fact. But this peptidoglycan is not always arranged the same way in all types of bacterial cell walls. This diagram here shows two different types of bacterial cell wall arrangements. Here we're going from the out, the, excuse me, the inside of the cell to the outside, so from the cytoplasm and the plasma membrane to the cell wall. And you can see in this version, there's a really thick layer of peptidoglycan just outside the plasma membrane, whereas some other bacteria have a relatively thin layer of peptidoglycan and then another membrane-like layer outside of that that's also made of some special types of lipids. So the exact structure and the way the peptidoglycan is layered depends on the type of bacteria. In terms of function, the bacterial cell wall mostly provides protection and a little bit of structural support. That peptidoglycan is less rigid than cellulose or chitin, so it doesn't really provide a whole lot of structure. If we think of the plasma membrane as a bag around the cell, then the bacterial cell wall is a lot like just another layer of bag around all of that. So that's everything you need to know about cell walls. Until next time, take care of yourself, take care of each other.